Hello, today I'm going to go over some different ways that you can work with your alternately assessed students when you're working on the main idea and you're addressing the ELA essential element RI 3.2, which is identifying details in a text. So I created a Jamboard and I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how we go through a graphic organizer and you can provide different levels of differentiation and different levels of support for your various students. So I started off with what's the main idea, right, to get them thinking about it, a little picture here. And then as we go through, I found this really awesome infographic that has some examples of what the main idea is. It's what the text is mostly about. We want to look at the title and the pictures. And sometimes the main idea is in the first or last sentence. We want to look for clue words that are repeated over and over. So I thought this was a really great infographic that I just found online. I embedded into my Jamboard as the background because I think it has some really great points. And I love that it's almost like they're little detectives trying to figure it out. It's like a little mystery, right? So let's go through this really awesome graphic organizer that I created. Um, and I liked this. I thought it was fun. Um, it is a ice cream cone and then each scoop are the details within the story. So what I did here was um, I had taken a graphic organizer and I provided a lot of color coding support. Um, I went through with the marker and I kind of went over the little ice cream scoops. Um, it's not perfect, but it definitely gives you the idea, right? If we're looking for color coding, the students will absolutely know a blue detail, a green detail, and a red detail. And what you can also do with your corresponding text is you can highlight those different parts so that your students can identify it as they're reading. Now, once you come to this part, which would be the you do part of the lesson, I then provided more icons for our students who may be utilizing AAC devices, and I provided them with the text, color coding, and an icon to help support them. So I put this into a Jamboard because your students can go in here and they can very simply just drag and drop each of the icons in the correct places, right? So what is the main idea of the little informational text that we had read? Well, it was all about penguins. Right, And then one detail we learned about penguins was they eat fish and shrimp. They're birds that don't fly and they live in very cold places, right? So you can have your students go in, move around the different icons, right? They can drag and drop them or something else they can do is they can go in and they can draw lines. So with Jamboard, they can go in and use this pen feature right over here. They could click on it, they can change the color of their pen or just leave it any color. And then they can go in and draw a line to each of the areas, right? So cold can go here, our main idea can go here. So if they don't have the fine motor skills to drag and drop, they can very simply go in and do that. If your students are capable and you have this over here, they can go in and write it or they can use a text box and type it in. Right? So some different ways to have them utilize some icons here and support them when they're utilizing a graphic organizer. So let's go through and I'm going to show you how I will differentiate and I'm kind of fading away some of the supports. So this would be for my very early learners that need a lot of support. There's a ton of color coding and they have their icons with the information right over here. Okay, So it's kind of like an errorless way to teach them. Also, if you only want to do one at a time, so say your students are not there with the details yet, you can keep those details right over here and only focus solely on the main idea, right? So you would go in and you would leave just this one here for them to identify, right? So you can definitely provide only one question per page. You do not need to have all four here like I have or as many details even, right? You don't have to work on that, but just giving you an idea of where you can go with this. So let's move along. So down here now I would have for a higher level learner, I printed out some sentences. So I went into Board Maker and I have them all listed here where they can kind of, like I said, just drag and drop those different boxes into the ones that go along with the color coding, right? And they're all similar to what we saw on the other slide with the small icons, but these are typed out into sentences in Board Maker. So once again, they can go through, identify that main idea, identify the three details that they read about and that talk about what penguins do, right? So you can just kind of have all those stacked over here and have them go through almost like a stack of cards that they would then identify what the main idea is and what are the three supporting details. Okay, so that's one idea. Another thing you can do is you can just have the color coding, 
right? You can just have this color coded from the text. They can go in, they can write it in if they are capable. They can go in and type in a text box right here if they just add that. And they can go in and type out the different details and the main idea from the text that you read together as a class. Especially if you have that text highlighted um, in a PDF with, you know, highlighting so that they can go back and they can definitely pull out that evidence from the text or that information that you were queuing them into. So over here, I kind of faded back some of that color coding over here and I just provided some supports here. Now what else you can do with these icons is even if you have the icons here, you can still have your students write out the sentence. So once again, this would be fading back some support and, and increasing the rigor by having your students not just move the icons over to make sure they go to the correct place and that you're correctly identifying what the main idea is and three supporting details, but now you can still have your students go in and they can write out either just the words, if that's where they're at, or they can go in and write these into sentences. So they can say, the main idea is penguins, or the main idea of the text was about penguins. Penguins eat fish and shrimp. Penguins do not fly. Penguins live in cold places. So they can go through, they can write that in. You can have them say it. If they can't write it, they can verbalize it to you. Or they can go in and provide some text boxes and type it in if that's where they're at. So you can also still continue to use these icons. As you see here, I also faded back some of the color coding. The whole icon itself is not color coded. It's just the border. Okay, so now if we move along here, I'm going to show you another thing you can do is if you're focusing on one detail at a time, you might want to provide two options for some details, right? To have your students pick different ways they can almost say the same thing. So there's a lot of information in text and we can pull out some different sentences that might help us to mean the same thing and provide some details. So I had some, I had two options here. I had either they live in cold places or a little bit of a more challenging sentence if my students were ready for it, if I wanted to increase some rigor, I can actually talk about the places that they do live, right? So I also typed out another sentence that they can either write in, they can type in, or they can draw a line to if they wanted. And this one says either they live in cold places or they also live on the coasts of South America, Africa, and Australia. So they can choose which informational sentence they want to provide as that detail. They're both correct, but it's their option, right? It's their choice. So I thought that that was another great idea to increase some rigor, give them some more options instead of just having one where it becomes a right or a wrong. Let's have them do both. Maybe they can write it in. Maybe they can verbalize. If they can't, they can draw a line to the one that they want if you're providing one detail at a time, right? Maybe three details at once is too much for them right now. So you can also fade back your color coding completely and just have a box right around each of the details and the main idea if your students are ready for that, right? They can then go in, they can write it in, they can type it in, or maybe they need to verbalize that to you or type it into their AAC device and be able to tell you in that way. And that is totally fine. Once again, I just wanna show you how you can fade back some of those supports and increase the rigor for your students. Another fading support is just underlining each of the details and then having them identify the main idea on their own, right? If that's what we're focusing on, can they pull it out? Can they first pull out that main idea and then provide three details about that main idea? So once again, fading back from what we had all the way in the beginning, which was full color coding support, full on icons, full on colored in ice cream scoops, down to just an underline here, which would match or maybe be similar to what they're reading. Maybe instead of highlighting the whole word, you just underline it. And of course, if your students are ready, you can leave it completely open just with the highlighted text perhaps so they could pull out some information and then they can go in and again, write or type or use their AAC device to verbalize what are the main idea in three details. This might be something, something similar any sort of these faded back type graphic organizers and when we fade some of the support, that may be what you work on towards the end of your unit, right? So maybe when you're beginning, you're starting off with something like this, and you're like, okay, they're gonna need a lot of support, but I still want them to write. And maybe by the time you're done with going through your lessons, they're up to something like this where they only need that box. So I just wanted to go through, I wanted to show you some various ways that you can provide different types of color coding support, all using the same graphic organizer, but different ways to differentiate for each of your students and their different levels for wherever they're at so that you can meet them there, right? Having them write out sentences, having them identify different icons. So 
I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can utilize Boardmaker and a Jamboard together and work on different types of main idea graphic organizers with your students.